This morning on CBS 2 News, a veteran in need after his home burns down. A look at the impact after a Boise apartment complex and how you can help. Plus, an explosion shocks the community in Boston, the investigation underway, and what we know about a potential motive. And a new option for kindergarten in Boise has some parents feeling more limited. Why some are asking for the return of half-day kindergarten. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom with the latest on wildfires burning across the region. But before that, it is a cooler start to your morning. Let's get a first look at your forecast with Marcos Guadarrama. Good morning, Marcos. And good morning. That's right. We're going to see a nice uh, cooler day in the valley. We are going to see a cool down in the region beginning tomorrow, but this is our live shot right now. 59 degrees south winds there at three miles an hour. A nice calm and mild start to your hump day. Looking at our temperatures right now, 59 out there in Nampa, Ontario there at 55 and Mountain Home 55 uh, right there as well. There's a uh, Bacall there at 45 degrees. Now that smoke forecast has been clearing up a bit. That moisture coming through the area yesterday cleared some of that out, but we may still see some of those hazy conditions here in the valley for today and possibly into tomorrow. So looking at that temperature trend this morning, getting into the 60s there by 8 a.m., 66 by 10 a.m., and then 11 a.m. Uh, there at 70 degrees. Looking really quickly here at our highs, mid 80s for today uh, 84 out in Emmett 82 there in Nampa and then 84 in Mountain Home Sarah Thank you, Marcos. It is 501 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. We are looking good out there this morning. Hope y'all are having a good morning out there. Grab a cup of coffee or your favorite warm drink and join us for, of course, your latest news headlines and Marcos weather updates every 10 minutes. And when you get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 a.m or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And you are looking live in London this morning where a ceremonial procession will take the coffin of Queen Elizabeth from the, sec the second from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall. That's where she'll lie in state for four days ahead of her funeral on Monday. Now the Queen's four children, including King Charles and her two grandsons, both Prince William and Prince Harry, will walk behind her coffin. Now it's estimated more than a million people will come to see the Queen lying in state ahead of Monday. Well, turning to developing news here in Idaho, neighbors still feeling the impact of a devastating fire at Creek Bend Apartments last week. Now a Boise State student and veteran lost basically everything but his life when it's those flames because of those flames and of course the smoke. Now CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares his story and how you can help. Jesse Knudsen served in the military for seven years. I was in South or Venezuela, Thailand, uh, the Middle East, and then Germany briefly. Now he's a business student at BSU. He just moved into the Creek Bend Apartments on South Colorado Avenue a few weeks ago. But Wednesday night, he came home from an exam to firefighters. His unit, a total loss. When I walked in it, I mean, I don't mean to exaggerate, but it kind of looked like something out of the apart or like an apocalypse movie. It was just like black walls, ceiling, carpet. Almost everything, except for some boxed up appliances, destroyed. I had uh, some camping gear and climbing gear that was in boxes. That stuff, unfortunately, was spared, but that was about it. The university helped him and the other students affected get into a hotel. With all of the support, I mean, from the university and the community as a whole, it's it's been far less painful than it could have been. His property manager helped transfer his lease to another place, so this week he moved. Now he needs just about everything. I've had a few toiletries that I've acquired or the uh, the first hotel I stayed at, they gave me like toothbrush and toothpaste or toothpaste because I didn't have any of that. He doesn't even have a bed. I do like camping, so I've just been sleeping on my floor and luckily my sleeping bag survived, so I've just been doing it that way. It's kind of like living in Thailand again. In all, about 22 units were impacted and about 10 of the units near his are unlivable. It's a very humbling experience. I mean, honestly, I've been through worse, so this, uh, I mean, it's bad, but it's not irreversible. As you can see, despite everything, Jesse's remaining positive. 
He does still need things like men's size, small clothing, socks, towels, sheets, and any other type of household goods. He lost everything. Now you can bring donations to the Veterans Services Center on campus. Now fire investigators still trying to figure out just what sparked that fire. Well, switching gears, an explosion shocking at Boston University overnight. Now, police there say a Northeastern University staff member being treated for a hand injury after a package exploded on campus late last night. Now, officials rushed to escort other students away from the area and search for any other explosives. A search revealed a second similar package that was ultimately rendered safe by our bomb squad. I will tell you that the scene is secure and that the investigation is ongoing. Police say the package contained a rambling note criticizing Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and the relationship between academic institutions and virtual reality. The FBI is helping in this investigation. Well, Nampa police looking for a man who might know something about a homicide. Now, take a look at this picture. Investigators say they want to talk to him about a killing off of First and Cassia Street. Now, if you know who this is, call police or Crime Stoppers. That's 343 COPS. And turning now to fire season, firefighters sending out a warning, don't fly drones over wildfire areas. Two drones got too close to the Ross Fork fire. CBS has learned one nearly crashed into one of their helicopters on Sunday, causing it to land for about 15 to 30 minutes. Crews say that amount of time could mean life or death, especially since those helicopters are needed if a firefighter gets hurt and needs to be taken care of. The smoke and weather already limiting flying abilities. We hope that it was was unintentional and innocent, but that doesn't matter because if there's a collision, it could be catastrophic, not for the drone operator, but for the people on the helicopter. Flying a drone or any other aircraft that interferes with firefighting efforts on public lands is a federal crime punishable by up to a year in prison. If you see a drone flying in a fire area, tell police right away. As for the fight against the Ross Fork fire is progressing this morning. The blaze is 37 and a half thousand acres and is at 19% containment. A community meeting will be held in Fairfield later today to discuss updates on the fire and answer any questions. And Idaho's largest wildfire, the Moose Fire, is still burning northwest of Salmon. It's nearly 130,000 acres now but containment has jumped up to 45%. There will also be a community meeting today regarding this fire. That one will be held in North Salmon. Well, in California, the mosquito fire continuing to flare up. Heavy winds pushing flames even faster. Fire crews working to create a fire break to stop that fire from crossing over Forest Hill Road, where Forest Hill High School stands. So the previous days we had uh, the smoke which layered in uh, over the fire, which kind of helped uh, reduce the spread of the fire. But as that lifted, the winds picked up. Very important that we're trying to keep it out of the high school, but also keep it from spreading further uh, east or further into the community. Despite enormous efforts on the front lines, the Mosquito Fire has burned homes, property, and tens of thousands of acres. You're seeing some of that video right now. Now, according to Cal Fire, the Mosquito Fire, it's burned over 50,000 acres and is sitting at 25% containment. And back here in Boise, a local parent wants the Boise School District to do something after big changes to the kindergarten program. The Boise School District announced earlier this year that it will offer tuition-free all-day kindergarten to parents but that means half day kindergarten was on its way out this year. Parents who want the half day option have to send their kids to a single school in Boise for parents like Sherry Nevers. This causes problems and for my family. We've just found that it's nice to have that special time after school to decompress and then have one on one time. The district announced it would continue half day kindergarten, but only at one school, Liberty Elementary. In addition, there are no buses, no lunch, and parents will have to commit to half-day kindergarten through the end of this semester. We reached out to the Boise School District to see if there would be more half-day options available next year, but we have yet to hear back. Well, speaking of school, it is a cooler start to your morning as we are kicking off the day. 
That's right, Sarah. We're going to be seeing nice uh, cool temperatures this morning. Here's a look at that starting the day forecast. Going to be in the 60s this morning, so a little uh, cooler than uh, normal for you to start to your mornings. And then taking a look at that bus stop forecast as you get those kids ready out the door. 59, 60 this morning, partly cloudy conditions. And then as they get home this afternoon, partly cloudy conditions, 81. Uh, most of that uh, smoke, hazy conditions have been sort of pushed away as that moisture came into the valley yesterday, but we still may see some of that haze later on today. Going to show you this temperature history. We are sort of trending back into that near normal, below normal uh, average uh, for our highs. We are going to be getting into those lower uh, temperatures as the week goes on, as we have a several uh, troughs come through the area, bringing moisture to the valley. But looking at our dog walking forecast, Nice 60 degree weather this morning. Some clouds, possibility of some haze still out there and that sunrise happening at 722 this morning. Going to talk a little bit about our future cast this afternoon. We are in between uh, shortwave troughs right now, so we are going to see some moisture down in the Idaho Nevada border and as a system moves to the east of the Malheur County area, some moisture in the mountain region as well. But tomorrow we are expected to see another shortwave trough come through the area bringing more moisture into the valley area as well as the mountain region. And we're going to be seeing that rain on and off throughout the week, folks. So cooler temperatures, that possibility of rain, and then some of those gusty winds. Sarah? Push out some of that smoke too. It is 511 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning, courtesy of ACHD. Yeah, running smoothly. Not much to report. It is a going to be a beautiful day out there, but as Marco said, just a little cooler. Not much to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KVOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, flu season in full swing. What doctors say you need to know heading into fall. Plus, more people say they're over the pandemic. How the return to normal continues despite the virus still sticking around. And it's time for our question of the day, our favorite part of the day. Now, first, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It's hard to believe, but 15% of people say they've actually done this, even though others didn't want them to. That answer, reading someone else's diary. Yeah, guys, that's a no go. Now for today's question. You may have already used one of these today and you'll probably use it at least seven more by the end of the week. What is it? We'll read some of your guesses. Here's a look at your local forecast in council for today. Uh, still some hazy conditions with a high of 81 tonight, clearing things out with a low of 56 and tomorrow partly cloudy conditions, highs in the upper 70s. Doctors say the flu season is hitting early this year and you should get the flu shot now. Dr. Jason Bonner says people most at risk of serious illness are those living with chronic medical conditions such as diabetes or heart problems, people over the age of 65, those with cancer, or others with compromised immune systems. The higher risk you are, um, it's a, always a better idea to do more to protect yourself. Along with the flu shot, you, pr you can protect others and yourself by staying home if you're sick, washing your hands often, and wearing a mask. St. Luke's is giving out flu shots to those 12 and older drive through style this weekend. It's happening from 9 to 5 in front of the St. Luke's Outpatient Surgery Center on Eagle Road in Meridian. You will need to schedule your appointment first, and you can find a link for that on IdahoNews.com. Well, if you're eligible, you can also get a monkeypox or MPV vaccine at Boise State University. Now, because of limited supply, the CDC reserves vaccinations for those most at risk. So the arbiter reports for the shot at BSU. That means anyone who believes they've had contact or the contact with the virus, gay, bisexual, or other men or trans persons who've had sexual interactions with men or any sex workers. They have only been 12 monkeypox cases here in the state of Idaho, none reported on BSU's campus. By the way, Idaho now has a website for monkeypox data. You can find a link on ours 
The next shot clinic is tomorrow from 830 to 430 at BSU's Health Center. Now we have much more coming up too ahead from BSU and COVID may not really be over, but we are leaving it behind. That's the latest from a new poll looking at our behavior to reduce risks from that virus. Now medical reporter Liz Bonus breaks down those numbers. Hey there, everybody. This poll asked people to rate their lives at this stage in the pandemic. It does appear that we fear COVID-19 a lot less than we have in the past two and a half years. That means more of us are continuing to get back into everyday life even though more than 400 people a day are still dying of COVID-19 complications. According to public health specialist, Dr. Steve Fagans, this desire to put the pandemic behind us. And in no ways uh, diminishes the need to get your bivalent uh, booster now that it's available. This survey found only about six in 10 of us are concerned about getting the virus right now. Nearly two in three of us say we don't wear masks anymore. And nine in 10 of us say COVID-19 has changed our lives forever. Most of us describe our lives as good, but the area we rank the lowest right now in that category, our money. Uh, we are seeing people that are coming into our locations that are stressed out about finances. Nearly three in four of us say pandemic shutdowns early on were needed, but half of us say they caused unnecessary damage to the economy. Financial coach Jason Fishburn says if you're struggling with debt, don't be afraid to return to your cash only option. Take cash out. You have that set amount when you go into the store so you can get your needs. And once you run out of the cash, uh, you come back and you do it again the next time. Finally, one important note, only about one in four of us are familiar with the newest treatments for COVID-19, such as Paxlovid. So if we get the virus, we may not know to ask for it. A person that knows your personal health history, always the best person to ask about the path forward. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. And now we'll check in with Marcos for a look at our weather, but I don't know about you guys, that rain yesterday felt like a nice treat. Yeah, no, even just the smell. That's my favorite part of kind of the end of summer, beginning of fall, is when that rain starts to move through and you can smell the rain on the asphalt. If, if you're in the city, you may know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That was definitely nice. And I think the nice thing about the rain was uh, clearing out some of those hazy, smoky conditions here uh, in the valley. So no longer under any uh, smoke or haze warning as of this morning. And we're going to see a nice cool down to those temperatures uh, as the week goes on. Here's a live look right now, though, looking at our temperature right now, 59 degrees and looking across the valley right now, 60 out in Meridian, 59 out in Caldwell. And then there's CUNA there at 54 degrees mountain home there at 55 and then Glens Ferry at uh, 55 as well. Going to be uh, staying uh, a normal average for today. 84 there Boise, 82 down in Nampa and then 84 out in Mountain Home, 83 there Caldwell and then the mountains, uh, 72 there McCall and 79 out in Idaho City. We are in between a couple of short wave troughs coming through the area, bringing some of those rainy conditions. Today we may see some moisture there at the Idaho Nevada border and then as the system moves to the east out in Malheur County, we may see some of that uh, rain in the mountain region, which will hopefully help out with those fires as well. So cooler temperatures are going to be on the way. I'll show you that here in a second. Rain this week, cloudy conditions, and then a cool and wet Sunday. Here's a look at those uh, numbers for the extended forecast. Hazy today, partly cloudy tomorrow, 80, 78 there by Friday, and that nice cool down. We haven't seen these temperatures in a while, folks. Partly cloudy, 71 on Saturday, 67 by Sunday, and then 70 there by Monday. Definitely going to see a cool down, Sarah. Oh, as the smoke moves out, Marcos, a picture perfect forecast. It is 520 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, very quiet out there this morning and not much to note. Just be aware of some of the road construction areas. You may see a little bit of slowdowns heading into the morning but right now. Not much to talk about. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, inflation still sitting at a stubborn high. A new report and a look behind what goes into getting that data. 
Plus, the president headed to Detroit Auto Show. What he's expected to talk about there as he continues his push for a turn toward electric vehicles. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 524 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. The monthly inflation report out yesterday shows prices in most sectors still stubbornly high, up 8.3% over last year. Now, it's the statistic we're all paying attention to these days, but getting that number takes a lot of work from hundreds of people across the country. Now, CBS's Bradley Blackburn shows us how they do it. Casey Wenzel isn't at the grocery store to shop, but she is searching for something very specific. I'm looking for a 7.5 ounce uh, can of mackerel. Wenzel is one of 475 economic assistants with the Bureau of Labor Statistics who fan out across the country every month checking actual prices. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next item. And how precise are we talking here? Very precise, very accurate. Down to the penny? Down to the penny. Pennies matter because they all factor into the Consumer Price Index, the monthly inflation rate used in calculations for everything from Social Security payments to salaries. Maureen McDevitt Green oversees price programs for the Philadelphia region. I expect most people think that there's some computer someplace that's just like whirling around and spitting out a number, but this is very real. They track prices for some 100,000 goods and services. Everything from canned mackerel to cars, rents to repair work. We price um, telecommunications, we price tuition, we price daycare. Anything that you can think about, we're pricing it. Wenzel has been doing this work for 16 years, and a day on the job means making calls to a gas station. Price per gallon, please. And stopping by a bike shop. Great, thank you so much. We can't show you the exact stores or products because their confidentiality is protected by law, but the data collectors are precise. Have you ever thought about going on the prices, right? No, I can't <laughs> believe you asked me that question. <laughs> Taking the guessing out of the prices that really matter. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Central New Jersey. President Biden, he's expected to visit the Detroit Auto Show today. The Associated Press reports that he's expected to showcase his administration's efforts to promote EVs, that's electric vehicles. Now, the move comes after Congress recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which invested $5 billion helping states create EV charging stations. Detroit's last auto show took place back in 2019. The past two were canceled because of the pandemic. And that does bring us to today's number of the day. It's all about fueling opinions across California's new electric car mandate. Now, 58% of voters say they'd oppose the introduction of a California-style ban on gas-powered cars for their own states. Now, Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds a third would support such a ban. Now, the survey also finds more than half believe it's important to reduce the price of gas more than to carbon emissions. Well, still to come, Boise neighbors still feeling the impact after a devastating apartment fire last week, how they lost everything and how you can help. And a look at what's coming up tonight. Of course, you can join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock after all your favorites. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, an explosion shocks a community in Boston. The investigation underway and what we know about a potential motive. Plus, a Las Vegas official staying in jail just a little longer after being charged with the murder of a journalist. Why his lawyer wants more time to work on his case. And a new option for kindergarten in Boise has some parents feeling more limited. Why they're now asking for the return of half-day kindergarten. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. And good morning. Happy Wednesday. Let's start off by taking a look at our live shot right now. 59 degrees out there. A nice calm morning to your Wednesday. South winds there at three miles an hour. Feels like 59 out there. Looking at our temperatures across the valley this morning. Nice upper mid 50s there. 59 out in Ontario. Uh, 55 there. Uh, out in Mountain Home and then McCall there at 45 degrees. Going to talk a little bit about the smoke forecast. We did see that rain yesterday 
clear things out for us. Uh, so we may see some haze for today, but uh, should be seeing clear, uh, more clear uh, air throughout the next day or two here in the valley. And looking at our morning temperatures this morning, going to be in the 60s uh, there by 8 a.m., 63 there by 9 a.m., and then going to be getting into the 70s there by 11. Highs for today, 84 Boise, 83 out in Caldwell, and then 82 out in Nampa. It's going to be a nice mild day, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Marcos. Feeling great out there to kick off your morning. It is 531 CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, pretty quiet out there to kick off your Wednesday morning. Everything is looking good on our main roads, even secondary roads. Not much to report, so when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News this morning. I'm Sarah Jacobson and I'm Ashley Carter. Today we start things off with continuing coverage of a devastating fire at Creek Bend Apartments last week. A Boise State student and veteran lost basically everything but his life to those flames and smoke. Jesse Knudsen just moved to the Creek Bend Apartments on South Colorado Avenue a few weeks ago. He served in the military for seven years and he's now a business student at BSU. Last week, he came home from an exam to firefighters. When I walked in, it, I mean, I don't mean to exaggerate, but it kind of looked like something out of the apocalypse or like an apocalypse movie. It was just like black walls, ceiling, carpet. He has found a new place to stay, but he's still in need in just about everything. Men's size, small clothing, socks, towels, sheets, and any other household goods. You can bring donations to the Veterans Services Center on campus. Well, an explosion shocking a Boston University community overnight. Now, police there say a Northeastern University staff member being treated for a hand injury after a package exploded on campus late last night. Officials rushed to escort other students away from the area and search for any other explosives. A search revealed a second similar package that was ultimately rendered safe by our bomb squad. I will tell you that the scene is secure and that the investigation is ongoing. Police say the package contained a rambling note criticizing Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and the relationship between academic institutions and virtual reality. The FBI is helping in this investigation. Las Vegas official Robert Tells is staying in jail for now. His lawyers requesting more time to work on his case after Tells is charged with murdering a journalist. Review Journal investigative journalist Jeff German was found dead after exposing problems under Tell's leadership. Prosecutors say they will continue to prepare to argue for a significant bail at the next hearing. We consider him to be a flight risk and a danger uh, to the community. So when the bail issue arises, we're going to argue for a very high bail. Police say they found Tell's DNA under the fingernails of German, along with shoes, a hat, and a vehicle connected to the crime scene. Tell's is expected to be back in court on September 20th. Well, back here at home, Nampa police looking for a man who might know something about a homicide. Take a look at this picture. Investigators say they want to talk to him about a killing off of first and first off of Cassia Street. Now, if you know who this is, call police or Crime Stoppers. That number is 343 cops. And turning now to wildfire season, firefighters sending out a warning. Do not fly drones over wildfire areas. Two drones got way too close to the Ross Fork fire. CBS has learned one nearly crashed into one of their helicopters on Sunday, causing it to land for 15 to 30 minutes. Now crews say that amount of time could mean life or death, especially since the helicopters are needed if a firefighter gets hurt and needs to be taken care of. The smoke and weather already limiting flying abilities. We hope that it was was unintentional and innocent, but that doesn't matter because if there's a collision, it could be catastrophic, not for the drone operator, but for the people on the helicopter. Flying a drone or any other aircraft that interferes with firefighting efforts on public lands is a federal crime punishable by up to a year in prison. If you see a dry drone flying in a fire area, tell police right away. 
Well, in California, the mosquito fire flaring up again. Heavy winds pushing the flames even faster. Now, fire crews working to create a fire break, stopping that fire from crossing Forest Hill Road, where Forest Hill High School stands. So the previous days we had uh, the smoke which layered in uh, over the fire, which kind of helped uh, reduce the spread of the fire. But as that lifted, the winds picked up. Very important that we're trying to keep it out of the high school, but also keep it from spreading further uh, east or further into the community. Despite enormous efforts on the front lines, the mosquito fire burning homes, property and tens of thousands of acres. Now, according to Cal Fire, the mosquito fire burning over 50,000 acres, though it is 25% contained. Well, a local parent wants the Boise School District to do something after big changes to their kindergarten program. CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she has more. The Boise School District announced earlier this year that it'll offer tuition-free all-day kindergarten. But that meant half-day kindergarten was on its way out. Many embrace the free full-day option, but not Sherry Nevers. She still wants her child to go for a half-day. For my family, we've just found that it's nice to have that special time after school to decompress and then have one-on-one -on -one time. Originally, the district wasn't planning on offering the half-day saying the limited options reflect the limited demand. Of course, you're hearing from families who want full day kindergarten and you're not hearing from families who want half day kindergarten because that's an option that's already happening that people who want it are enjoying and using and did not think they needed to call and say, please continue this program. But Sherry did. And last May, the district announced it would continue half day kindergarten, but only at one school, Liberty Elementary. It was so late in the school year that it wasn't necessarily feasible for families to go back and reconsider their plan A, especially when plan A looked a lot different than it did originally. In addition, there are no buses, no lunch, and parents will need to commit to the half day kindergarten through the end of the semester. I think asking people to commit to a program with so many unknowns so late in the year just meant that the result is one class this year that's rather small. Although Sherry says she's happy the district at least offered the one half day class, she believes there needs to be more options. And having those different programs and those different options really allow families to tailor their child's education to best meet the needs of the child. And we did reach out to the Boise School District to see if there would be more half day options available next year, but have yet to hear back. Well, guys, it is a gorgeous start to our morning, but by gorgeous, I mean a little bit cooler. It's nice to wake up and put on a jacket before coming into work. <laughs> I know. And I think we're going to start to see those mornings, uh, cooler mornings uh, happen more often as we get into that cooler weather, Sarah uh, and Ashley. But uh, looking at that starting the day forecast this morning, getting into the uh, 60s there this morning, 62 there by 7 a.m. And then uh, going to see those partly cloudy conditions for today, as well as the possibility uh, for some of those hazy conditions as well. But that off to school forecast this morning, 59 degrees partly cloudy conditions, and then when they're headed home, picking them up this afternoon, partly cloudy, a high of 81 there. Going to show you our temperature history uh, here real quickly. As you can see, we were in those uh, near normal, above normal uh, uh, highs for the past several days, but going to start to see those below normal categories come back into the region as we get into those upper 70s. We are going to be seeing a cool down as a couple of troughs move through the area throughout this week. But the dog walking forecast this morning in the 60s, some clouds, possibility of some haze as well, depending on which area you are. And then that sunrise happening 722 AM this morning. Going to talk about that future cast real quick. As I said, we are going to see some moisture this morning at the Idaho Nevada border. We are seeing a system move to the east of us as well, bringing showers to the mountain region. And then tomorrow, another system coming through the region, bringing more rain showers to the but potentially the uh, the uh, mountain region as well as the Treasure Valley and the Twin Falls area. Thank you, Marcos. It is 540 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring a team traffic all morning long. Live look out there courtesy of ACHD. Everything running along smoothly this morning. 
on both main roads and secondary roads. Yeah, nothing slowing you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI at 8, 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. The question is, you may have already used one of these today and you'll probably use at least seven more by the end of the week. All right, what are we thinking, Marcos? You know, at first, I mean, I, I've used my phone like four times already, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have to say my phone, you know. No, definitely, Ashley. Speaking from experience as a coffee lover, I'm gonna have to go with coffee mug. Ooh, yes, yeah, seven more by the end of the week. <laughs> I like that. that maybe <laughs> maybe double that for me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Jeff says a coffee pot. Oh, like the pot as a whole, not so much cups. Okay, I see where he's going with that. Let's see what else folks at home have to say. Wes, a Q-tip. I like that. That's the one thing. I was thinking a hairbrush or a toothbrush, but it's specifically different items. You'll use it seven times. So that's a good guess, a Q-tip. Yeah. All right, let's see. Joe, a toilet plunger. <laughs> oh, I hope you're having a good week. Maybe a little more fiber in that diet, guys. All right, yeah, I'm gonna call you out, Joe. All right, well, if you think you know the answer, you still have about an hour and 15 minutes. We'd love to hear your guess. Of course, you can just do that by heading on over to our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll read some more of your guesses coming up and reveal the answer right before CBS this morning. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Russia losing ground in Ukraine. The latest from the front lines straight ahead. Here's a look at the forecast where you're at out in council this morning. Hazy conditions today, 81 tonight that uh, getting clearing up below 56 and tomorrow partly cloudy conditions with a high of 79. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom. Turning to Ukraine this morning, President Zelensky says his army has retaken more than 3,000 square miles of territory previously held by Russia. This as the counteroffensive is giving hope that the war has reached a turning point. Ukrainian troops are on the heels of their Russian invaders, pushing some back to the border. One official says the military is dropping flyers over Russian soldiers, urging them to surrender. Well, Ken Starr, best known for his role in the impeachment of former President Bill Clinton, he died yesterday of complications from surgery at a Houston hospital. Now, Starr's investigation led to the discovery of Clinton's affair with Monica Lewinsky. The former federal judge eventually became president of Baylor University, but in 2016 was forced out over his handling of sexual assault complaints. Now, more recently, he joined former President Trump's legal team for his first impeachment trial. He was 76 years old. Well, a federal judge unsealing more of the FBI's Mar-a-Lago affidavit after its initial release last month. Now, the new details showed there was a grand jury subpoena back in June looking for video of Mar-a-Lago storage rooms. Now, FBI agents reportedly saw up to 55 boxes of records there, and the Trump Organization gave a hard drive in response to the subpoena. Now, according to the DOJ, there is no need to keep the information officially sealed since Trump's lawyers already revealed parts of the grand jury's investigation. Well, abortion just became an even hotter flashpoint ahead of midterms. Senator Lindsey Graham proposing a nationwide ban on the procedures in many cases. Now, Amy Kiley reports on how candidates from both parties may use this bill to try to rally voters. They're going to ban abortion if they get in charge. Democrats are pouncing on a new bill from Senator Lindsey Graham. After 15 weeks, no abortion on demand except in cases of rape, incest, to save the life of the mother. Many Democrats were already campaigning on the unpopularity of overturning Roe v. Wade in June. Leader McConnell acknowledged that a federal ban on abortion was now, quote, possible. Possible, but not likely. Senate Republicans were slow to support the bill. I think most of the members of my conference prefer that this be dealt with at the state level. And states are dealing with the issue. West Virginia passed a near total ban yesterday. California has a new website to help people in restrictive states travel there for the procedures. Republicans who control Graham's own state of South Carolina found a near total ban blocked by members of their own party last week. They are fighting to take us back. 
Another barrier to a federal ban is likely a veto. It's wildly out of step with where the majority of Americans are. Still, some analysts see Graham's bill as a campaign talking point for the GOP. They say it could appeal to moderates seeking a middle ground while also rallying the base. There is a consensus view by the most prominent pro-life groups in America that this is where America should be at the federal level. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Freight railroad representatives and union officials, they're heading to Washington, D.C. today ahead of a potential freight railroad strike. Now, the two sides expected to meet with the Department of Labor Secretary Marty Walsh on Wednesday, so that's today. Now, the meeting comes amid concerns that about 60,000 workers may go on strike if there's no deal by Friday. Now, officials say a freight rail service shutdown would likely have major economic consequences in the U.S. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about a scary good opportunity. Now, the Dish Satellite TV service, they're looking for someone to watch 13 films based on Stephen King novels. Now, whoever selected will get $1,300 or $100 per movie, but it's not totally free money. You will have to track your heart rate, rate and jump scares and a few questions about which flick you liked best. So my question, guys, would you do that 13 Stephen King movies? I, I absolutely would, especially this time of year. I feel like we're just getting into perfect like movie marathon weather. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Like that cooler weather just makes you want to get like a nice hot cup of something, wrap yourself in a blanket and like settle into your couch. I, I however, am a wimp. Um, <laughs> scary movies terrify me, so I may need like a little bit of a, a, a pacer getting into it. But for that much money, yeah, I'd totally do it. What about oh, you, Marcos? I, I, I don't think I'd be up for it. I'm not a scary movie person, so I, <laughs> I think I'll just stick to... Uh, less scary stuff or is, no. I mean, I, yeah, the I think that's fair. We can watch time. Halloween town and you know, all the classics, yes. you know, yes. Yes. Uh, hocus pocus. <laughs> all right. Well, Marcos, how's it looking out there this morning? Yeah. To, uh, looking at our local forecast right now, this is our current temperature right now. 59 out there. Uh, South winds are at three miles an hour. Nice mild start 59 Nampa 54 out in CUNA and then Caldwell there at 57 degrees. There's a uh, 54 down in Glens Ferry and then 55 out in Mountain Home. Looking at our highs for today, going to be uh, in that normal range category, a little bit above normal, uh, warmer than yesterday, 84 Boise, 84 Mountain Home, and then 85 for our friends out in Ontario. So we are going to continue to track that satellite and radar as the, those short waves trough shortwave troughs move through the region and bring some of that moisture to our area. So cooler temperatures on the way, rain this week, cloudy conditions, and then a cool and wet Sunday headed our way. Uh, partly cloudy for tomorrow, high of 80, 78 by Friday. We are going to see that nice cool down, 71 there by Saturday, 67 there, mostly cloudy by Sunday. And uh, that Cool down is going to be the big story, I think, this week. Showers there on Thursday for the mountain region. Partly cloudy, the chance of more showers as those troughs move through the area. High of 60, mostly cloudy by Sunday. And then that partly cloudy condition sticking around throughout next week. And as always, head to, uh, tune in today for our 4 or 530 shows for Roland's forecast later in the day. Yeah, looking forward to a nice cooling trend. Thank you, Marcos. It is 551 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. All is looking good. A few more headlights evening us out as we head into the 6 o'clock hour, but nothing expected to slow you down. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, staff safety raising concerns at Boise Pride over the weekend. What the executive director has to share straight ahead this morning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. 
554, welcome back. Continuing coverage on the Boise Pride controversy from last week. Now, you may remember a child's drag show at the center of it. Now, the executive director, Donald Williamson, tweeting about the sponsorship changes just days before the festival. We reported on that. He says some sponsors, like Idaho Power and Zion Bank, didn't want to pull financial support, but wanted their logos off the website and sponsor material. Now, he says Idaho Power called and had a 30-minute conversation about why. They say it was because of staff safety. They were getting awful and threatening emails and calls. He says once the logos came down, the harassment stopped as people moved to other sponsors. Now, Williams has said some sponsors who pulled out may not be welcome back, and some may need to prove support once again. Now, CBS2 will continue to follow this story and update you on IdahoNews.com and, of course, the CBS2 mobile app. Well, looking ahead, it's looking to be another exciting weekend for NFL football and the return of football dominated by primetime television ratings last weekend. Now, more than 23 million people watched Sunday night's game between Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. That's according to the Nielsen Company. And about 20 million people tuned in for the season opener on Thursday. That was between the Buffalo Bills and the L.A. Rams. Now, those who were the two, those were the two most watched programs this week. Now, the next three highest rated primetime programs last week were pregame NFL shows. And you can get in on the NFL action right here on CBS2. That's Sunday at 11. It's the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then at 225, you can watch the Cincinnati Bengals go ahead to head with the Dallas Cowboys. Well, also coming up this weekend, it's the March of Love. Now, organizers want people to show up with positive signs. They're meeting at the Capitol building, they say, at 3 on Saturday to march to Grove Plaza. Now, the march organizers hope people from all backgrounds will show up to join together. We have much more details. Just head to IdahoNews.com. And still to come this morning, inflation still sitting at a stubborn high. A new look at a report and what goes behind getting that data. Plus, flu season in full swing. What doctors say you need to know heading into the fall. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather, they continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with the headlines at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a Boise apartment complex burns down. A look at the impact to the tenants and how you can help. Plus, an explosion shocks a community in Boston, the investigation underway, and what we know about the potential motive. And a new option for kindergarten in Boise has some parents feeling more limited. Why they're asking for the return to half-day kindergarten. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you from downtown Boise. It is Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. I'm Sarah Jacobson. And I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom with your latest on wildfires burning across the region. But before that, it is a cooler start to your morning. Let's get a first look at your forecast with CBS 2's Marco Squadarama. Good morning. Good morning. Here's a look at our forecast this morning. Our current temperature 60 degrees there. Uh, nice and mild southeast winds there at three miles an hour. We're going to be uh, near average highs for this afternoon. Uh, a little warmer than yesterday, about a degree or two. But looking at our temperatures right now, 59 boy uh, Nampa, 56 out in Ontario, and then 55 Mountain Home. And then there's McCall there at 42 uh, degrees. That smoke forecast, uh, we did manage to see some of that uh, sort of move away after those showers yesterday, those winds bringing us uh, um, getting rid of those smoke advisories, but we may see some of that lingering haze in the valley this afternoon. Looking at our morning temperature trends, getting into the 60s there by 9 a.m., 66 there by 10 a.m., and then 70s there by 11 a.m. and noon as well. So our highs today, a nice uh, 84 there, Boise, uh, 83 there, Nampa, and then 84 in Mountain Home.
Oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 601 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is looking good out there. Everything running along smoothly. Uh, no reports of anything slowing you down. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And you are looking live in London this morning where a ceremonial procession. It'll take the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall. That's where she'll lie in state four days ahead of her funeral set for Monday. Now the Queen's four children, including King Charles and her two grandsons, Prince William and Prince Harry, they'll walk behind the coffin. It's estimated that more than a million people will come to see the Queen lying in state ahead of her funeral. Well, turning to developing news here in Idaho, neighbors still feeling the impact of a devastating fire down at the Creek Bend Apartments last week. A Boise State student and veteran lost everything. Now, CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares his story and how you can help. Jesse Knudsen served in the military for seven years. I was in South or Venezuela, Thailand, uh, the Middle East and then Germany briefly. Now he's a business student at BSU. He just moved into the Creek Bend Apartments on South Colorado Avenue a few weeks ago. But Wednesday night, he came home from an exam to firefighters, his unit a total loss. When I walked in, it, I mean, I don't mean to exaggerate, but it kind of looked like something out of the, or like an apocalypse movie. It was just like black walls, ceiling, carpet. <laughs> Almost everything, except for some boxed up appliances, destroyed. I had uh, some camping gear and climbing gear that was in boxes. That stuff, unfortunately, was spared, but that was about it. The university helped him and the other students affected get into a hotel. With all of the support, I mean, from the university and the community as a whole, it's it's been far less painful than it could have been. His property manager helped transfer his lease to another place, so this week he moved. Now he needs just about everything. I've had a few toiletries that I've acquired or the uh, the first hotel I stayed at, they gave me like toothbrush and toothpaste or toothpaste because I didn't have any of that. He doesn't even have a bed. I do like camping, so I've just been sleeping on my floor and luckily my sleeping bag survived, so I've just been doing it that way. It's kind of like living in Thailand again. In all, about 22 units were impacted and about 10 of the units near his are unlivable. It's a very humbling experience. I mean, honestly, I've been through worse, so this, uh, I mean, it's bad, but it's not irreversible. Well, as you can see, despite everything, Jesse is remaining positive, but he does still need things like men's size, small clothing, socks, towels, sheets, and any other type of household goods. He did lose everything. Now you can bring donations to the Veterans Service Center on campus at BSU. In the meantime, fire investigators still trying to figure out what sparked that fire. Well, switching gears, an explosion shocking a Boston, the Boston University overnight. Police there say a Northeastern University staff member being treated for a minor hand injury after a package exploded on campus late last night. Officials rushed to escort others away from the area and search for any other explosives. A search revealed a second similar package that was ultimately rendered safe by our bomb squad. I will tell you that the scene is secure and that the investigation is ongoing. Police say the package contained a rambling note criticizing Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and the relationship between academic institutions and virtual reality. Now the FBI is helping in this investigation. Well, here at home, Napa police looking for a man who might know something about a homicide. Take a look at this picture. Investigators say they want him to, to talk to him about a killing on the first off of Cassia Street. Now, if you know who this is, call police or Crime Stoppers. That's 343 COPS. And turning now to fire season, firefighters sending out a warning. Don't fly drones over wildfire areas. Two drones got too close to the Ross Fork fire. CBS has learned one nearly crashed into one of their helicopters on Sunday, causing it to land for 15 to 30 minutes. Crews say that amount of time could mean life or death, especially since those helicopters are needed if a firefighter gets hurt and needs to be taken to care. The smoke and weather already limiting flying abilities. We hope that it was, was unintentional and innocent, but that doesn't matter because if there's a collision, it could be catastrophic, not for the drone operator, but for the people on the helicopter. 
Flying a drone or any other aircraft that interferes with firefighting efforts on public lands is a federal crime, punishable by up to a year in prison. If you see a drone flying in a fire area, tell police right away. And as for the fight against the Ross Fork fire, this how it's progressing this morning, the blaze is over 37 and a half acres and 19% contained. A community meeting will be held in Fairfield today to discuss updates on the fire and answer any questions. And Idaho's largest wildfire, the Moose Fire, is still burning northwest of Salmon. It's nearly 130,000 acres. Containment has jumped up to 45%. There will also be a community meeting today regarding this fire. That one will be held in North Salmon. Well, in California, the mosquito fire flaring up once again. Heavy winds pushing those flames even faster. Fire crews working to create a fire break to stop that fire from crossing Forest Hill Road. That's where Forest Hill High School stands. According to Cal Fire, the mo mosquito fire, it's burned more than 50,000 acres and sits at 25% containment. Back here in Boise, a local parent wants the Boise School District to do something after big changes to the kindergarten program. The Boise School District announced earlier this year that it will offer tuition-free all-day kindergarten to parents, but that means half-day kindergarten is on its way out. This year, parents who want the half-day option have to send their kids to a single school in Boise. For parents like Sherry Nevers, this causes problems. For my family, we've just found that it's nice to have that special time after school to decompress and then have one-on-one -on -one time. The district announced it would continue half-day kindergarten, but only at one school, Liberty, Liberty Elementary. In addition, there are no buses, no lunch, and parents will need to commit to half-day kindergarten through the end of this semester. We reached out to the Boise School District to see if there would be more half-day options available next year, but they have yet to hear back from them. Well, speaking of school, definitely a little bit cooler as you're heading out the door this morning. That's right, Sarah. Looking at that uh, starting the day forecast this morning, going to be in the 60s there uh, as you start your day there. 62, 7 a.m., 60 there by 8 a.m. And then as you're getting those kiddos ready for school this morning, partly cloudy conditions, uh, mostly clear there, 59. And then on the way home this afternoon, 81 degrees. We may still see some of that haze in the valley, even though most of it has cleared up and no longer seeing those uh, uh, advisories in place anymore. And looking at our temperature uh, trend over the past several days, we have been staying above normal, but we're kind of moving into that more near normal category right here. 78 yesterday, about three degrees warmer than what's considered normal. And then we're going to see a cool down over the next several days. And of course, I'll have more on that later. But look, looking at that dog walking forecast this morning, 60 degrees this morning, some clouds, of course, some of that haze and that sunrise happening at 722 a.m. this morning. Looking at that future cast, we do have a system moving to the east of us out in the uh, Malheur County area. So we may uh, we did see some reports of lightning as well as possibility of thunderstorms, but not shouldn't be reaching the Treasure Valley area. We may see some moisture down here, though, in the Nevada Idaho border as that trough moves to the east of us. And we are expected to see another trough come through the area tomorrow, bringing more showers potentially to the valley, that mountain home region, that Twin Falls region, and then that mountain region as well. But overall, nice below average temperatures. I yeah, love the sound of that. Thank you, Marcos. It is 610 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. A few more headlights out there this morning, but everything looks to be running along smoothly. So nothing in your way when you do eventually get in that car. Make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, flu season in full swing. What doctors say you need to know heading into fall. Plus, more people say they're over the pandemic. How the return to normal continues despite the virus still sticking around. And don't forget about our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. It's hard to believe, but 15% of people say they've actually done this even though others didn't want them to. The answer may surprise you. Reading somebody else's diary. Yeah, don't do it, folks. 
Don't do it. All right, now for today's question of the day. You may have already used one of these today, and you'll probably use at least seven more by the end of the week. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at that local forecast in Ontario today. Hazy conditions with a high of 84 tonight. Those hazy conditions sticking around with lows in the 60s and tomorrow smoky conditions with a high of 83. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom. Doctors say the flu season is hitting early this year and you should get your flu shot now. Dr. Jason Bonner says most people are at risk of serious illnesses. Are those living with chronic medical conditions such as diabetes or heart problems, people over the age of 65, those with cancer or others with compromised immune systems? The higher risk you are, um, it's a, always a better idea to do more to protect yourself. Along with the flu shot, you can protect yourself and others by staying home if you're sick, washing your hands often, and wearing a mask. St. Luke's is giving out flu shots to those 12 and older this weekend. It's happening from 9 to 5 in front of the St. Luke's Outpatient Surgery Center on Eagle Road in Meridian. You will need to schedule your appointment first, and you can find a link for that on IdahoNews.com. Well, if you're eligible, you can also get a monkeypox or MVPV vaccine at Boise State University. Now, because of limited supply, the CDC reserves vaccinations for those most at risk. So the Arbiter reports for the shot at BSU, that means anyone who believes they've contacted the virus, gay, bisexual, or other men or trans persons who had sexual interactions with men or any sex workers. There, there have also, there have only been 12 monkeypox cases in the state of Idaho, none reported on the BSU campus. By the way, Idaho does have a website for monkeypox data. You can find that, just head on over to our website. Well, coronavirus may not really be over, but we are leaving it behind. And that's the latest from a new poll looking at our behavior to reduce risks from the virus. In the meantime, medical reporter Liz Bonus breaks down those numbers. Hey there, everybody. This poll asked people to rate their lives at this stage in the pandemic. It does appear that we fear COVID-19 a lot less than we have in the past two and a half years. That means more of us are continuing to get back into everyday life even though more than 400 people a day are still dying of COVID-19 complications. According to public health specialist, Dr. Steve Fagans, this desire to put the pandemic behind us. And in no ways uh, diminishes the need to get your bivalent uh, booster now that it's available. This survey found only about six in 10 of us are concerned about getting the virus right now. Nearly two in three of us say we don't wear masks anymore. And nine in 10 of us say COVID-19 has changed our lives forever. Most of us describe our lives as good, but the area we rank the lowest right now in that category, our money. Uh, we are seeing people that are coming into our locations that are stressed out about finances. Nearly three in four of us say pandemic shutdowns early on were needed, but half of us say they caused unnecessary damage to the economy. Financial coach Jason Fishburne says if you're struggling with debt, don't be afraid to return to your cash only option. Take cash out. You have that set amount when you go into the store so you can get your needs. And once you run out of the cash, uh, you come back and you do it again the next time. Finally, one important note, only about one in four of us are familiar with the newest treatments for COVID-19, such as Paxlovid. So if we get the virus, we may not know to ask for it. A person that knows your personal health history, always the best person to ask about the path forward. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. And now we'll check in with Marcos for a look at our weather. And I mean, when I left for work this morning, I was thinking it is almost time to break out that jacket. Yeah, no, yesterday brought in the boots, a little bit of rain moving our way. Marcos, is there more on the horizon? That's what everybody's wondering. Definitely. I mean, we're going to be seeing that cooling trend over the next several days. We are going to be cooling. I believe it was upper 70s and even low 70s over the next week. And then Sarah did mention that rain. So definitely going to be seeing much chillier conditions. But this is our live shot right now. Uh, 60 degrees out there. Southeast winds at three miles an hour. We're going to show you our current temperatures there. Uh, 57 there in Nampa, 61 there out in Meridian and then 55 down 
and Mountain Home. Looking at our highs for today, going to be a little bit above average, a couple degrees warmer than yesterday. 84 there in Nampa, 83 uh, out in Nampa, and then 84 here in Boise. As we see those uh, systems move into the region, we may see some moisture in the Idaho Nevada border. We did see some reports as well as lightning and showers uh, right there on the uh, western part of the state as well. So cooler temperatures on the way, rain this week, cloudy conditions, and then a cool and wet Sunday. Here's a look at that extended forecast that cool down 78 there on Friday, 71 there on Saturday. And folks, 67 degrees on Sunday. We may see some showers in the area that day as well. And taking a look at that extended mountain forecast, partly cloudy for today, a high of 73 showers for tomorrow. We are going to see a series of troughs move through the area, bringing showers over the next several days. Saturday there with a high of 63, 60 by Sunday and partly cloudy by next week. Oh, so excited for that cool down, Marcos. Thank you. Also, just over a week before we hit official kickoff to fall, it is 620 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. A live look out there this morning for you. Looking pretty good. Everything running smoothly. No reports of any accidents or incidents. Yeah, good to go. So when you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, inflation still sitting at a stubborn high. A new report and a look behind what goes in to getting the data. Plus, the president headed to the Detroit Auto Show, what he's expected to talk about there as he continues his push towards electric vehicles. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 623. Welcome back. The monthly inflation report out yesterday shows prices in most sectors still stubbornly high, up 8.3% over last year. Now, it's the statistic we're all paying attention to these days, but getting that number actually takes a lot of work from hundreds of people across the country. CBS's Bradley Blackburn shows us how they do it. Casey Wenzel isn't at the grocery store to shop, but she is searching for something very specific. I'm looking for a 7.5 ounce uh, can of mackerel. Wenzel is one of 475 economic assistants with the Bureau of Labor Statistics who fan out across the country every month checking actual prices. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next item. And how precise are we talking here? Very precise, very accurate. Down to the penny? Down to the penny. Pennies matter because they all factor into the Consumer Price Index, the monthly inflation rate used in calculations for everything from Social Security payments to salaries. Maureen McDevitt Green oversees price programs for the Philadelphia region. I expect most people think that there's some computer someplace that's just like whirling around and spitting out a number, but this is very real. They track prices for some 100,000 goods and services. Everything from canned mackerel to cars, rents to repair work. We price um, telecommunications, we price tuition, we price daycare. Anything that you can think about, we're pricing it. Wenzel has been doing this work for 16 years, and a day on the job means making calls to a gas station. Price per gallon, please. And stopping by a bike shop. Great, thank you so much. We can't show you the exact stores or products because their confidentiality is protected by law. But the data collectors are precise. Have you ever thought about going on the prices, right? No. I can't believe you asked me that question. <laughs> Taking the guessing out of the prices that really matter. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, Central New Jersey. President Biden expected to visit the Detroit Auto Show later today. Now, the Associated Press reports that Biden, he's expected to showcase his administration's efforts to promote electric vehicles. Now, the move comes after Congress recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which invested $5 billion to help states create EV charging stations. Now, Detroit's last auto show took place back in 2019. The past two were canceled because of the pandemic. Well, that brings us to today's number of the day, which is about fueling opinions around California's new electric car mandate. Now, 58% of voters say they'd oppose the introduction of a California style ban on gas powered cars for their own states. Well, Scott Rasmussen National Survey finds a third would support such a ban. 
The survey also finds more than half believe it's more important to reduce the price of gas than to do that with carbon emissions. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, Boise neighbors still feeling the impact of a devastating apartment fire last week. We speak to a man who lost everything and how you can help. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News. After all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, an explosion shocks a community in Boston. The investigation underway and what we know about a potential motive. Plus, a Las Vegas official staying in jail just a little longer after being charged with the murder of a journalist. Why his lawyer wants more time to work on his case. And a new option for kindergarten in Boise has some parents feeling limited. Why they're now asking for the return of half-day kindergarten. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. And good morning on this Wednesday. Here's a look at your live shot right now. 60 degrees in downtown Boise. Southeast winds there at three miles an hour. Looking at some current temperatures across the area right now. 56 out in Ontario, 57 there in Nampa, and then Mountain Home there at 55 degrees. McCall there at 41. Going to take a look at our surface smoke forecast. We did see things clear up uh, yesterday as that system moved through the area. Uh, we are no longer in any advisories for for smoky or hazy conditions. However, we may still see some hazy conditions in the valley this afternoon. Looking at our morning temperature trend, getting into the 60s there by 9 a.m., 66 by 10 a.m., and then into the 70s there by 11 a.m. and around noon this uh, later today. Looking at our highs for today, going to be a little bit above uh, average, a little warmer than yesterday. 84 there, Mountain Home, 84 Boise, and then 83 out in Nampa. Looking at our future cast, uh, we are seeing a couple system moves, systems move through the east of us, and we may see some moisture there in the Idaho-Nevada border. No, oh, thank you, Marcos. It is 631 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. We do have a crash. It's near Simplot Boulevard and Wheats Road. That's out in Caldwell. Of course, if you are traveling that way, you may expect a little bit of slowdowns happening. As far as I-84, everything so far is looking good. Uh, not much to mention. But again, just be aware of some of those um, areas where there is construction in the lower Treasure Valley may slow you down a little bit, but more headlights out there this morning and we'll continue to taper up as we head closer to the seven o'clock hour. But other than that, just make sure when you do get in the car, you're turning on News Talk KBOI. We have all of your team traffic updates on 93.1 FM and of course, 670 AM. Good morning and welcome to CBS 2 News this morning. I'm Sarah Jacobson and I'm Ashley Carter. Today we start things off with continuing coverage of a devastating fire at Creek Bend Apartments last week. A Boise State student and veteran lost basically everything but his life to those flames and smoke. Jesse Knutson just moved into Creek Bend Apartments on South Colorado Avenue a few weeks ago. He served in the military for seven years and now he's a business student at BSU. Last week when I walked in it, I mean, I don't mean to exaggerate, but it kind of looked like something out of the or like an apocalypse movie. It was just like black walls, ceiling, carpet. Jesse has found a new place to stay, but he's still in need of just about everything. Men's size small clothing, socks, towels, sheets, and any other household goods. You can bring donations to the Veterans Services Center on campus. Well, an explosion shocks a Boston, Boston University overnight. Now, police there say a Northeastern University staff member being treated for a minor hand injury after a package exploded on campus late last night. Officials, they rushed to escort other students away from the area and search for any other explosives. A search revealed a second similar package that was ultimately rendered safe by our bomb squad. 
I will tell you that the scene is secure and that the investigation is ongoing. Police say the package contained a rambling note criticizing Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg and the relationship between academic institutions and virtual reality. The FBI is helping in this investigation. And Las Vegas official Robert Tells is staying in jail for now. His lawyer is requesting more time to work on his case after Tells is charged with murdering a journalist. Review Journal investigative journalist Jeff German was found dead after exposing problems under Tells' leadership. Prosecutors say they will continue to prepare to argue for significant bail at the next hearing. We consider him to be a flight risk and a danger uh, to the community. So when the bail issue arises, we're going to argue for a very high bail. Police say they found Tell's DNA under fingernails of German along with shoes, a hat and a vehicle connected to the crime scene. Tell's is expected to be back in court on September 20th. Well, back here at home, Nampa police looking for a man who might know something about a homicide. Yeah, take a look at this picture. We'll have it for you there. Now, investigators say they want to talk to him about a killing on the 1st off of Cassia Street. Now, if you know who this is, call police or Crime Stoppers. That number is 343-COPS. And turning now to fire season, firefighters sending out a warning, don't fly drones over wildfire areas. Two drones got too close to the Ross Fork fire. CBS has learned one nearly crashed into one of their helicopters on Sunday and this caused it to land for about 15 to 30 minutes. Crews say that amount of time could mean life or death, especially since those helicopters are needed if a firefighter gets hurt and needs to be taken to care. The smoke and weather already limiting the flying abilities. We hope that it was, was unintentional and innocent, but that doesn't matter because if there's a collision, it could be catastrophic, not for the drone operator, but for the people on the helicopter. Flying a drone or any other aircraft that interferes with firefighting efforts on public lands is a federal crime and is punishable by up to a year in prison. If you see a drone flying in a fire area, tell police right away. Well, a local parent wants the Boise School District to do something after big changes to their kindergarten program. CBS 2's Michaela Elich has more on the move. The Boise School District announced earlier this year that it'll offer tuition-free all-day kindergarten. But that meant half-day kindergarten was on its way out. Many embrace the free full-day option, but not Sherry Nevers. She still wants her child to go for a half-day. For my family, we've just found that it's nice to have that special time after school to decompress and then have one-on-one -on -one time. Originally, the district wasn't planning on offering the half day, saying the limited options reflect the limited demand. Of course, you're hearing from families who want full day kindergarten and you're not hearing from families who want half day kindergarten because that's an option that's already happening that people who want it are enjoying and using and did not think they needed to call and say, please continue this program. But Sherry did. And last May, the district announced it would continue half day kindergarten but only at one school, Liberty Elementary. It was so late in the school year that it wasn't necessarily feasible for families to go back and reconsider their plan A, especially when plan A looked a lot different than it did originally. In addition, there are no buses, no lunch, and parents will need to commit to the half day kindergarten through the end of the semester. I think asking people to commit to a program with so many unknowns so late in the year just meant that the result is one class this year that's rather small. Although Sherry says she's happy the district at least offered the one half day class, she believes there needs to be more options. And having those different programs and those different options really allow families to tailor their child's education to best meet the needs of the child. And we reached out to the Boise School District to see if they would have half day options available next year, but have yet to hear back. Well, speaking of school, it is a cooler note kicking off your Wednesday. That's right. That's right, Sarah. Looking at our starting the day forecast, going to be seeing those uh, lows, uh, well, morning temperatures in the 60s there. Here's a look at that uh, forecast. 7 a.m. there, 62. Uh, cooling down just a couple degrees there by 8 a.m. at 60. And then as you get those kids ready for school this morning, 
uh, mostly clear 59 and then as they get home or you're picking them up at the bus stop, partly cloudy conditions, 81 degrees later this afternoon. Going to show you our temperature history here uh, real quickly. As you can see, we've been trending downward there to more near normal below normal yesterday's high sort of three degrees there uh, under uh, below normal and then we'll be seeing our temperatures uh, get cooler as the week progresses and we see a series of troughs move through the area bringing us that much needed moisture looking at the dog walking forecast though this morning 60 degrees some clouds some haze this morning well most of those smoky conditions are going to be gone we are going to see some of that haze and then that sunrise happening at 7 22 this morning we are seeing a system currently move to the east of us we did see some reports earlier of lightning and thunderstorm in the valley but most of that moisture this morning going to be sticking in the idaho nevada border as that system moves to the east of us and then tomorrow seeing another system move through the area bringing rain to the valley and then rain to that twin falls area as well as to the mountain region so cooler temperatures and that much needed moisture yeah, looking forward to that. Thank you, Marcos. It is 640 on your Wednesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there, of course, at I-84, though we do have a report of a traffic collision out in the lower Treasure Valley. It's at Simplot Boulevard and Wheats Road out in Caldwell. Again, if you are heading that way, it may slow you down a little bit, but as far as our main roads, we are looking good this morning, though more traffic is expected as we zoom on in to the 7 o'clock hour. So when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. That question is, you may already use one, may have already used one of these today, and you'll probably use at least seven more by the end of the week. Okay, guys, I like the original. Um, one of our viewers in the last hour said a coffee pot. I think that's a great guess. What do you guys think? I'm going to have to go with coffee pot, but <laughs> for me, it's going to be about 10 more times this week. So <laughs> Just add I think to it. <laughs> with, with Ashley and Sarah, I think you both would agree. Oh, definitely. What do Absolutely. you think, Ash? Absolutely. Coffee pot, coffee mug. I was also thinking maybe a phone charger. Mm. Yeah. Yep. yep. I was going to say, I, I try to charge mine every single night. Does that happen? No. But <laughs> Verna says an alarm clock. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been using our phones, but that actual like standalone alarm clock, you know, on your bedside, something maybe people haven't seen in a while. Richard says a light switch out of the box. I like that one I like that. Yeah, no, getting on our little thinking caps. Gail says a spoon. Yeah, rather that's or, or, or any type of silverware, right? Really any. Yeah, any type yeah. of silverware. We had a good guess of a Q-tip. I really liked that one. That's a good one. I know yeah. they say not to put them in your ears, but I'm the worst, guys. <laughs> I can't resist it. All right. Well, okay. So our guess is coffee pot. I kind of like this, guys. We're as a team today. We're a, a front all together. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you still have about 15 minutes to guess. Of course, you can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. And still to come, Russia losing ground in Ukraine. We have the latest from the front lines coming up. Here's a look at your local forecast out in council today. Hazy conditions with a high of 81 tonight, clearing things up with a low of 56 and tomorrow partly cloudy highs in the upper 70s. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter in the newsroom. Turning to Ukraine this morning, President Zelensky says his army has retaken more than 3000 square miles of territory previously held by Russia. This as the counteroffensive is giving hope that the war has reached a turning point. Ukrainian troops are on the heels of their Russian invaders, pushing some back to the border. One official says the military is dropping flyers over Russian soldiers, urging them to surrender. Well, Ken Starr, best known for his role in the impeachment of former President Bill Clinton, he died yesterday of complications from a surgery in a hospital in Houston. Now, Starr's investigation led to the discovery of Clinton's affair with Monica Lewinsky. The former federal judge eventually became president of Baylor University, but in 2016 was forced out over his handling of sexual assault complaints. More recently, he joined former President Trump's legal team for his first impeachment trial. He was 76 years old. 
A federal judge unsealing more of the FBI's Mar-a-Lago affidavit after its initial release just last month. Now, the new details show there was a grand jury subpoena back in June looking for video of Mar-a-Lago storage rooms. Now, FBI agents reportedly saw up to 55 boxes of records there, and the Trump Organization gave a hard drive in response to that subpoena. Now, according to the DOJ, there's no need to keep the information sealed since Trump's lawyers already revealed parts of the grand jury's investigation. Well, you're looking live this morning in Washington, D.C., where abortion just became an even hotter flashpoint ahead of the midterms. Now, Senator Lindsey Graham postponing a nationwide or proposing a nationwide ban on the procedure in many different cases. Now, Amy Kiley reports on how candidates from both parties may use this bill to try to rally voters. They're going to ban abortion if they get in charge. Democrats are pouncing on a new bill from Senator Lindsey Graham. After 15 weeks, no abortion on demand, except in cases of rape, incest, to save the life of the mother. Many Democrats were already campaigning on the unpopularity of overturning Roe v. Wade in June. Leader McConnell acknowledged that a federal ban on abortion was now, quote, possible. Possible, but not likely. Senate Republicans were slow to support the bill. I think most of the members of my conference prefer that this be dealt with at the state level. And states are dealing with the issue. West Virginia passed a near total ban yesterday. California has a new website to help people in restrictive states travel there for the procedures. Republicans who control Graham's own state of South Carolina found a near total ban blocked by members of their own party last week. They are fighting to take us back. Another barrier to a federal ban is likely a veto. It's wildly out of step with where the majority of Americans are. Still, some analysts see Graham's bill as a campaign talking point for the GOP. They say it could appeal to moderates seeking a middle ground while also rallying the base. There is a consensus view by the most prominent pro-life groups in America that this is where America should be at the federal level. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, before we get to weather, we want to let you know about a scary good opportunity. Now, the Dish Satellite TV service, they're looking for someone to watch 13 films based on Stephen King novels. Now, whoever selected will get $1,300 or $100 per movie. But it's not totally free money. You'll have to track your heart rate and jump scares and answer a few questions about which of the flicks you liked best. So guys, I got to know, would you do that $1,300 for 13 movies? You know, I like scary movies. I like cooler weather. I <laughs> would probably even do this for free. <laughs> no, exactly. Get in the mood for Halloween. Might as well start it off with 13 movies and 1300 bucks. Hey, what about you, Marco? See, I'm going to have to pass on that. No, <laughs> my, my heart rate would be going through the roof. I'm not a scary movie person. So yeah. I'm with you, Marcos. I would have to have an emotional support person with me, and that would I'd have to split the money anyway. So that's how it goes. <laughs> All right, well, heading out the door this morning, it is a picture-perfect start to your Wednesday. Some nice, uh, a nice 60-degree uh, morning this weekend. Those southeast winds right there, 3 miles an hour, nice and calm for your hump day today. We're going to see uh, temperatures a little bit above normal, but uh, still staying in that uh, uh, um, a couple degrees warmer than what we saw yesterday. So here's a look at those current temperatures there, 55 in Nampa if you're out there getting ready. Uh, to start your day 55 down in Mountain Home and then 56 out in Ontario. Looking at our highs for today, a couple degrees warmer than yesterday, but still in that normal category. There's 84 Boise, 84 down in Mountain Home and then 79 out in Idaho City. Now looking at our satellite and radar, we are going to be seeing some rain move through the area over the next several days, we did see that rain yesterday, which cleared some of that smoky condition that uh, haze out and got rid of those advisories. So we no longer have those, but we are going to be continue to see the, that rain and moisture come through the area, potentially the valley, definitely the mountain region. I'll show you that here in a second, but cooler temperatures on the way rain this week, those cloudy conditions, and then we're going to be seeing a nice cool and wet Sunday. Hazy conditions for today, partly cloudy tomorrow, a high in the 80. We're going to start to see a cooling trend, 78 there, partly cloudy by Friday, partly cloudy Saturday with a high of 71. Getting into those mid to upper 60s by Sunday, 
mostly cloudy, and then getting back into the low 70s, a little below normal, but uh, going to be a nice cool down and partly cloudy conditions. Oh, looking great, Marcos. Yeah, almost over a week until we officially hit fall. But of course, it is Wednesday, 651 at that. And CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, you can see more headlines out there starting to really get going for the morning. Of course, give yourself enough time because we are seeing a little more cars out there this morning, but nothing to slow you down as far as collisions. Looking good out there. So when you do get in the car, turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, staff safety raising concerns at Boise Pride over the weekend. What the executive director has to share straight ahead this morning. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 654 on your Wednesday. Welcome back. Continuing coverage on the Boise Pride controversy from over the weekend. Now you may remember a child's drag show being at the center of all of it. The executive director, Donald Williamson, tweeting about the sponsorship changes just days ahead of the festival. He says some sponsors like Idaho Power and Zion Bank didn't want to pull financial support, but wanted their logos off the website and sponsor material. He says Idaho Power called and had a 30 minute conversation about why. They say it was because of staff safety. They were getting awful and threatening emails and calls. He says once the logos came down, the harassment stopped as people moved to other sponsors. Now, Williamson says some sponsors who pulled out may not be welcome back and some may need to prove their support again. Now, CBS 2 will continue to follow this story and update you on IdahoNews.com and the CBS 2 mobile app. Well, looking ahead, it's going to be another exciting weekend for NFL football. The return of football dominated primetime television ratings from last weekend. Now more than 23 million people watched Sunday night's game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Cowboys. That's according to the Nielsen Company. And almost 20 million people tuned in for the season opener on Thursday between the Buffalo Bills and the Rams. Now those were the two most watched programs this week. And you can get in on the action right here on CBS 2 Sunday at 11. It's the New England Patriots taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then at 225, you can watch the Cincinnati Bengals go head to head with the Dallas Cowboys. Also coming up this weekend, it's the March for Love. Now organizers want people to show up with positive signs. They meet at the Capitol at three on Saturday to march to Grove Plaza. Now, the March organizers are hoping people from all backgrounds will show up and join together. We do have details. Just head on down to IdahoNews.com. Well, it is time for our question of the day. That question, you, you may have already used one of these today, and you'll probably use at least seven by the end of the week. The answer? A password. A password. Gosh, okay, we were way off base, guys. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go get some coffee. We'll see you back here at 11. Have a great start to your morning, guys. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS.